Hello everyone, I'm Chuck. And I'm Simon. And we're here with Baldwin Filters to do a hydraulic filter install. Real quick, for the directions of how to do this, it is right on the can itself. There are installation pictograms as well. On this particular filter, there are performance pictograms, but not every hydraulic cartridge has this. So, Simon, can you give me a little demonstration of what we're going to do here to install this filter? So first things first, after you purchase your Baldwin filter from your local vendor, what you should do is inspect the packaging to ensure that there's no damage to the outside of the packaging. And then when you get ready to install this filter, you need to inspect the outside of the filter to ensure that there's also no damage to that that could possibly happen during shipping to the vendor or whenever. Um, mainly what I do is I look for dents in the cans and then damage to the gasket or the thread area on the filter itself. So what is the importance of uh, checking that? So what could a damaged filter, what, what potentially could uh, happen? Yeah, so damage can, to the can could cause leaks, holes in the can, your gasket, if it's damaged in any way, could also cause a leak and then yeah, if you've got bad threads on that filter, it's not going to want to install for you when you go to put that on your piece of equipment. So bottom line, we don't want downtime, so we don't want a damaged filter. If you find a damaged filter, what's the first thing you should do? Return it to your vendor, get it swapped out for a different one. Okay, we'll take care of you there. Now, continue to go through the steps here. What is the next thing you need to do for uh, an install on this filter header here? So step number one, you need to clean the header that you're going to be putting this filter on. Take a, some cleaning solvent, a clean rag, wipe down that sealing surface, make sure it's free of debris, um, any contaminant that you don't want in your system. Get rid of that by cleaning up everything, make sure it's good to go. So we get it cleaned up good, then where do we go from there? Then prior to install, you'll want to put a light film of whatever oil that your application is using to pre-lube this gasket. And the reason you want to pre-lube that, you want to make sure that your gasket doesn't bind when you're installing the filter and then when you go to remove this filter and change it out again, it'll help prevent that gasket from sticking in the header to ensure that when you put on a new filter, you don't have any leaks caused by an old gasket sticking in the header. So now you got everything lubed up and uh, you should be ready to install. Are there any specific instructions that we need to follow for uh, the threading onto the, to the header itself? Yeah, so go ahead, get your filter started on the post, thread it on, and thread it down until you achieve gasket contact. So some filters will have a, a post seal inside in the element that you're gonna feel when you're, you're installing that filter on the header and it's gonna kind of deceive you a little bit. It's gonna give you the perception that you've made gon gasket contact. So you, you wanna ensure that your gasket makes contact with the sealing surface on install. So you hit the, you hit the uh, gasket to the sealing surface, then are you gonna follow the pictogram? What does the pictogram tell you about tightening it from there? So the pictogram is gonna tell you what our required rotation is after ga gasket contact. So this one's telling us three quarters to one full revolution past gasket contact. So to do that, make your gasket contact and go ahead and continue to tighten that filter by hand to achieve that, that necessary rotation. And an aid that you can do to achieve that, to ensure that you're making that three quarters of a turn to one full revolution is go ahead and mark that can with a paint pen, a Sharpie, something that's visible that you can see and it'll help you know when you have that filter indexed far enough to get that rotation. So here we go. What happens if I don't get this tight enough? So if I don't get a full turn or, you know, it's, it's, it's too tough to get there. There's two things I need to do. What are those two things? Yeah, so we don't necessarily recommend that you use a filter rinse and install all of your filters every time. But in the event that you do, when placing that filter wrench on the filter, go ahead and slide that all the way 
down to the, the open end of the filter towards the header before clamping down on that thing to finish tightening it up. So the reason we, we suggest that is down here towards the base plate of the filter, that's where it's, it's gonna be the strongest so you can clamp on that and finish achieving that, that final rotation of the filter. It just, it, it's structurally, it's the strongest and you know, it just helps you from preventing to poke holes up here or smash this dome end of the can down with that filter wrench. So in kind of some of the pitfalls that would happen if you don't make, if you don't get the rotational uh, requirement met, leaks, this could come loose. And if you go to tighten it up with that filter wrench and you try to clamp on the dome side of the can, if you crush this, you could cause damage, poke holes. So that's why we don't recommend using a wrench if you don't have to. And if you do have to, make sure you get as close to that filter head as you can. So now we have this thing nice and snug. It's turned one turn past gasket contact. What do you need to do before you walk away from the application? Well, well prior to starting your, your piece of equipment, ensure that you haven't damaged it. Look for holes, uh, wrinkles, crushes, anything like that. Then go ahead, start your piece of equipment and, and check for leaks. So no leaks, no worries. You should have a good service interval out of that filter. That is the completion of your hydraulic filter change. Thanks for watching. Thank you.